want you to see something here. Go with me to Genesis, the first chapter, and then we're going to see something here. Um, Genesis, the first chapter. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. 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 Praise God. Now notice this. In the beginning, verse chapter 1, verse 1, in the beginning God created the heavens and the earth. The earth was formless and void. Darkness was over the surface of the deep. And the Spirit of God was moving over the surface of the water. Uh, the earth was formed and void, formless and void. Darkness was over the surface of the deep. And the Spirit of God was moving. Say with me, darkness over the earth causes the Spirit of God to move. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. 1997, we were in Mexico City, Pastor Christine. We took a group of students, and we had a wonderful time in Mexico City. We were uh, up in the mountains. Uh, they didn't have any buildings. Today they have buildings. It's a university now. Um, and uh, we went, and the guys were working on Prayer Mountain, which Prayer Mountain today is an octagon glass building where all the students get on this mountain and they pray all over the state of Mexico. Mexico City is the valley there, all. And in fact, Pastor Christine and I and other students moved a lot of the rocks that were on there to set them aside. Yeah, she's going like this. And that was the rocks that they used to build the walls with the glass. So it's a beautiful rock building. It's, it's, it's an octagon building. And so Pastor Christine uh, was out in the field with, with the girls. Uh, they were... Um, they were planting squash. Was it squash? Planting squash, having a great time. And, and I'm with a bunch of guys working on that, that, uh, that prayer mountain. And uh, we were putting all together the stones and the frame and everything. And all of a sudden, the wind blew so heavy on that mountain. And it got, now, we didn't know this was going to happen. We had no idea. And all of a sudden, it got cloudy, and then it got like night, and it got so pitch dark. Pitch dark that it confused a lot of things. The wind, the, it got cold, and I remember running out to Pastor Christine. I thought it was the end of the world. <laughs> I ran to Pastor Christine, and I got a hold, and I held on to all these other girls out there just wondering what's going on, so I held on to Pastor Christine, and I was, it was the... It was a solar, total solar eclipse that happened that I have never experienced in my life. And it was such a dark, cold, windy. It just shifted everything. Everything. The lights of the massive downtown Mexico City turned on. And horses and donkeys and cows were weighing and mooing and all kinds of stuff. And, it, it, was, it, was, it was a strange thing. I thought it was the, the Lord was coming. I thought something serious. I didn't know what it was. Well, tomorrow, uh, we're going to have a solar eclipse. Let's go, let's go to the book of Acts, the second chapter. Now, in the beginning, God created heavens and earth. We just read it. It was formless and void. But God had to do something. Darkness was over the surface of the deep, and the Spirit of God was moving. Uh, the Spirit of God was moving. I asked the Lord about this, this, this uh, event that's going to take place tomorrow. Personally, as a pastor, would I, should I know anything more? Should I prepare the people? What, what are you saying? And I heard crickets. Tick, 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 nothing. I said, okay, Lord, I know. But after realizing the Word of God, and then we know the Word, but we're going to see it, in Acts, the second chapter, say to me, Amen. Acts, the second chapter, hallelujah, in verses 17, Peter's having a speech at Pentecost, and he says something so powerful in the last day, verse 17, are you there? In the last days it shall be, says God. Now this is, this is right after the power of the Holy Ghost hit that place, it will be the power of the Holy Ghost. Now notice this, you got to see this now. In the last days it shall be, says God, that I will pour out my spirit on all flesh. Your sons and daughters shall prophesy, your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. 
Even on my men servant and maid servants, I'll pour out my spirit in those days, in those days, and they shall prophesy. And I will show wonders in the heavens above, signs on the earth below, blood, fire, vapor, smoke. The sun shall be turned into darkness and the moon into blood before, say with me, before, before the great and glorious day of the Lord comes. Now let me read to you in the Good News Translation, verses 19 and 20. And it says, I'll perform miracles in the skies above and wonders on the earth below. There will be blood, fire, and thick smoke. The sun will be darkened, and the moon will turn red as blood before the great and glorious day of the Lord comes. So we come, Lord Jesus, come. Amen. So this is prophesied already. Now, why would God bring out this through the prophets and for us to continue reading it and to see that all that will take place, what purpose is that for? Now, the world doesn't understand it. The world will think, well, it's a glorious time to go look at the thing. Many people are going to drive. Uh, they even made a beer after a certain town that they're going to be in. So people are going all over. I read on social media, a lot of people are taking their vacations out there to see this. What purpose is this for? To see the purpose for this, and I want you to hear something, I want you to hear, it's so that God can do an awakening upon the people that don't know him or have rejected him. It's going to be an awakening so that the Spirit of God can hover over these people and do a work. So tomorrow, you're going to see a greatest opportunity for many are going to come to Jesus. Many are going to come to the Lord. Many are going to ask God, God, is this the end of the world? What is taking place? Now notice this, there, there are a lot of people. There are a lot of people that are preparing and, and a lot of people are going to have fun. But I tell you what, if the Spirit of the Lord is going to move upon this eclipse, like we saw in Genesis, it was void and dark and the Spirit of the Lord hovered over it. I'm believing for a great move of God tomorrow. There's no fear here. There's, a, there's just a prophecy that's being fulfilled. This is a called a sign that's going to happen tomorrow. Come on, church. A sign that's going to happen tomorrow. Now, notice this. Uh, the solar eclipse is dubbed, notice this, is dubbed, is dubbed as the Great North American Eclipse. Now, I want you to see this. Now, I want you to see this now. Now, notice this. It will go through seven cities called Nineveh. Are you with me? <laughs> Amen. And it crosses one that it crosses that in 2017 was another eclipse that crossed over the city. And tomorrow it's going to cross over, make a perfect cross. And it's called it Little Egypt. So seven cities called Nineveh. At the peak of the cross, there's one that's going to call Little Egypt. Look at Matthew, the 12th chapter. Now, this is going to happen tomorrow. I'm excited. Amen. Now, you and I may not even see it. I mean, you may get, uh, you're, the, the sun may be a little brighter in our area. That's okay. But the towns that it's going through, I'll tell you what, Dallas is going to get it 100%. Little Fort Worth is going to get it. It's moving, it's moving uh, northeast coming from the southwest, moving on up. There's a town in Mexico, which I've been there, is Chihuahua. Boy, they're going to get it good. They're going to get it good. Total, 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 total. The rest are going to get the total, but there's going to be a fire ring. You know what this means? And let me give you a little scientific study. It's where, it's where, the, it's where the sun is going to get between the moon and the earth. But it's going to be perfectly measured where the moon is going to be bigger than the sun. That's why it's going to be total. Now, this is a sign. Now, the next one may be in, in 2045, uh, 44, is that right? 44, 45, amen. You know, whatever happens, these are signs. But this one here is very, very different. 
because it, it's going to go through seven cities called Nineveh. And then one, it's going to cross as a, a cross to Little Egypt, Illinois. I've never been there, but it's a little town called Egypt. Significance, right? Let's look at Matthew, the 12th chapter. Are you there? Hallelujah. Well, I'm not there. I'm glad you're there. Hallelujah. Amen. So we, come on, Pastor. We're with you. Hallelujah. Amen. I'm excited. I'm excited. People are saying, oh, we need a horde. No, 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 no. Not the body of Christ. Come on, church. This is, this is, this is a sign to the unbeliever, and this is a, a, a blessing to the believer. Because this prophecy being fulfilled before your own eyes. Have you ever thought about prophecy being fulfilled? You're seeing it. And then after the fact of this, after the consequence of this, what's going to happen to the church? Woo! Hallelujah! Get ready, church! Get ready! My daughter will ask me, uh, Daddy, what do you think about this eclipse? I said, oh, honey, it's going to be awesome. She said, really? I said, I said first of all, uh, nothing to fear, but it is going to open a lot of eyes. She says, really? So I'm going I'm to give her this link after it's over. Amen. Hallelujah. Matthew, the 12th chapter, are you there? And notice what it says in verse 38. Hallelujah. Amen. Verse 38. Now notice what Jesus says here. In verse 38, Then some of the scribes and Pharisees said to, unto him, Teacher, we wish to see a sign from you. Some translation says miracle. But he answered them, and listen to what he said, an evil and adulterous generation seek after, seeks after a sign. That's not the church now. And no sign will be given to it except the sign of the prophet, oh, oh, Jonah. Now, this, is going, this solar eclipse is going to go over seven cities called Nineveh. Okay, let's keep reading. Amen. It's almost like you're getting two... Two informations here, but the Holy Spirit is telling us some. And he said, For as Jonah was three days and three nights in the belly of the great fish, so will the Son of Man be three days and three nights in the heart of the earth. That was last Sunday. The men of Nineveh, now notice this, the men of Nineveh will stand up at the judgment, at the judgment with this generation and will condemn it because they repented at the preaching of Jonah. And now one greater than Jonah is here. Let's stop here for a moment. Now notice this. I'm going to read to you from the Good News Bible. On the judgment day, the people of Nineveh will stand up and accuse you, generation, this generation. Because they turned from their sins when they heard Jonah preach and tell you that there is something here greater than Jonah. Are you seeing this? This generation is seeing a sign. The sign they need to repent. Jesus said these are the signs that the wicked generation seeks, not the church. So I want to encourage you, church, just thank God that he's showing signs in the world to the unbeliever. But it's also an exciting time for the church to see this happening. Go get them, Jesus. That's what I can say. Holy Spirit, just shed your light upon them in this darkness. Let them come to Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. Those beer makers that are making beer over the solar system, let them come to Jesus. And every dollar sold from this beer, let them repent and say, we're giving it to the house of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Amen. Now, I'm just saying that, but you know what? Listen, I lived, we had a church down Budweiser Street. Budweiser gave a neighboring church $10,000, and they turned it down. And they asked me, would you turn it out? I said, no, 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 just show me where to go. I'll go get it right now. <laughs> Amen. Well, they gave it to another church. Now, God is calling the United States. It's calling you and me. It's calling us to a higher place in Him. First of all, He's telling the church, Repent. Now, why would he say to the church, repent? Because there's a lot of churches and there's a lot of people that are in church that need to repent with the world. Can you say amen or ouch? It's the truth. It's the truth. So he's calling us, but he's telling us, just like it was in Jonah's time, Jonah was sent by God to Nineveh. Jonah didn't want to go to Nineveh. He didn't want to. So he's, his attitude put him in a belly's whale. Or a whale of a belly. Or a belly of a whale. Whatever. Hallelujah. Amen. 
Pastor Christine makes fun of me every time I do that. The other day, what was I saying about my truck? I parked under a tree, and, and this, my truck was getting all kinds of bird droppings. And what did I say? I said, this bookie of these birdies. <laughs> she laughed at bookie. That's new bookie. I said, hey, that's what it is. It's bookie to me. <laughs> Big bookies on my bookie truck. Hallelujah. Amen. So in other words, God is calling Nineveh. And so Jonah, what did he do? He stayed three days. The Bible said he stayed spit, the fish spit him up. Where did he go? Straight to Nineveh. And walked right down the middle of that city. Five days it took him to get on the other side. So as he was going, boy, he was preaching. He was telling them. And the Bible says they repented. Nineveh got mad that they repented. He wanted them to get slaughtered. They fasted. They put dirt on themselves. They called upon the name of the Lord. And what happened? God turned his anger from Nineveh. The whole state of Nineveh, the whole city of Nineveh was delivered. I think there's an urgent call on the path of this solar eclipse that's calling people that are living there to repent but also the outside bands. Now, why didn't it go through other cities or why didn't it come through our city? Uh, I'll tell you why. We're going to see it in the Bible. We know a great reset has happened already. Pastor prophesied, Pastor Christine prophesied that reset before anybody talked about it. God gave us the word reset in prayer. When I heard that first word, I said reset, reset, start, it's starting, it's starting. And it started, now notice this, it started happening a, little bit, a couple years before COVID. The reset started happening. Uh, so so it, it, it's a call, it's a call to, to the unbeliever. Can you say amen? Now notice this, the, this generation, according to the Bible, says they're going to hold it against. The, Nineveh, the people of Nineveh are going to say, wait a minute, if we repented, why can't this generation today do the same thing? Why can't this generation do the same thing? I believe the grace and mercy is on our life and our country that it's going to cause a great repentance throughout this land. It's happening now. Many people come into the Lord. So the solar eclipse on Monday will have uh, a meaning. But notice this. Why is it that it's going to last in some places four minutes and 28 seconds. Now, Chihuahua is going to get it totally dark, but it's going to last only four minutes and 28 seconds. So that means it's moving quickly. Four minutes of darkness is four minutes long. Come on, church, you know what I'm talking about? Especially when you're in total darkness and you're really starting to say, wow, especially this generation that never experienced it. They're going to say, wow, this is strange. This is weird. And then you're going to have all these naysayers that are already talking. There's going to be a lot of naysayers out there. But for you and me, it's just, a, it's just exciting to know something so powerful has happened. The book of Joel is being prophesied. But why four minutes and 28 seconds? See, God chose this time, four minutes and 28 seconds. Go with me to Jeremiah quickly. Jeremiah, the fourth chapter. Now notice this, when I saw this, and I've been reading this uh, a month ago, uh, and I asked the Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, you, whatever you want, whatever you want, I'm not here to do doom and gloom. I'm not here to bring fear. I, I'm here to, to encourage the church of Jesus Christ that there is going to be a judgment that has been released and it's going to be greater that it's going to cause many to come to Jesus. We've been prophesying that before Jesus comes, the church is going to get brighter and brighter. So this is part of that. People are going to come to church like never before. You're going to see miracles like nothing before, like never before. You know, before Jesus Christ comes, things are going to happen so great. Yes, it's going to get ugly out there. Yes, there's things that are happening. There's more that we can read that's going to happen to the, to, to the world. But we know that it all culminates to one thing, and Jesus has the love, loves people. He has mercy for many to come to know him. So there's wake-up times. Tomorrow is going to be a wake-up time. 
Tomorrow is going to be a, a, an opportunity for many to, to ask, well, what does this mean? And the Spirit of God is going to hover over many, and many are going to wake up. Their, their veils of darkness is going to be removed. They're going to say, you know, I need Jesus. I need Jesus because I don't want, I don't want to live in my life worried about things like this ever. I want to go with Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. Uh, Jeremiah, the fourth chapter, verses 28. Notice what it says here. It, uh, it, it, in fact, the word for, according to the eclipse tomorrow, is four minutes. 28 is the seconds. The Bible says the whole city shall flee for the noise. Are, are you with me? For the noise of the, of the bowmen. They shall go into thickets and climb upon the rocks. Come on, church. Can you say amen? amen. But notice what it says in verse 29. For the earth shall mourn and the heavens above be black. Because I have spoken it I have purposed it, I will not relent, nor I will turn back from it. And then we read verse 29, for the whole city shall flee from the noise of the horsemen and the bowmen. This is, this is an alarm. This is an awakening. So for him to say four minutes and 28 seconds, and we read in chapter 4, verses 28, for this is, for the earth shall mourn. And the heavens above be black, because I have spoken it. That's the prophecy. I have purposed it. That's the work of God, that he's doing something. This, this is not Satan's work. This is God opening the eyes to a generation that doesn't know him, that has turned his back. We're living in a wicked generation, or don't you know that? We're living in a wicked, so awful time. Uh, 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 the enemy is literally out to destroy every person, everything that God has created, everything from, from the White House to your house to, to around the world, the enemy is doing everything he can. So God says, I'm going to purpose this tomorrow so that people can wake up from their slumber and see that I am God. And not only that, I'm giving them witness seven cities called Nineveh. Seven times means the perfection, number seven, 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 seven is my number. Wake up, church. Wake up, people. Seven times over seven cities, I'm saying Nineveh, 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 Nineveh. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. The Bible says, for the earth shall mourn. So that means there's going to be a consequence that's going to happen after this. There's going to be something that's going to happen after this. Now notice this. Last night while you slept, this morning, I've got news. 24 earthquakes happened last night while you slept. Each one was over 4.5. Each one was started at 4.5 and higher in magnitude. Last night, 24. Notice this. Uh, uh, New York City got an earthquake Thursday. And then on the heels of the earthquake, the Statue of Liberty got one of the brightest rod, lightning rods hit. Hit that lamp as she holds it up. Come on, church. I'm telling you, this is significant. Can I add something else significant? Tomorrow starts um, Trump's serious court date. Tomorrow. I'm praying for deliverance for, for Trump tomorrow. Yes. Now, Pastor, you just put politics. No, no, I'm putting a man of God that needs your prayer. A man of God that they're trying to break. Come on, church. And then you know everything else that is involved. And, and don't, don't, don't send me emails <laughs> about that. Amen. Come on, church. Hallelujah. Amen. So in other words, this here, scripture that you read, is referring to darkness in the heavens. A confirmation of what is occurring tomorrow in this nation. And, and it's going to carry some different types of events that are going to happen. I'm excited. I don't know about you, but I'm excited. Uh, literally, darkness is going to cover. Not only literally, but also figuratively. Now, something that a senator said, Kennedy, last week, and I zeroed in on it because I know the word. He said, 
You don't realize that spirits have been released in these days. I said that last Sunday. I said that there is times reserved in the end times that the hell is going to open up and release certain demons. I believe we've seen that already happening. But that means, that means there's, there's going to be increased of releasing also. But I'm excited because we carry authority and power in the name of Jesus. We increase in the anointing of God. Hallelujah. We push back darkness so people can come to Jesus. I'm excited. Devils are scared of you and me because of the blood. We sang blood songs today. Blood of Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. I believe in this. But I also believe there's going to be a lot of ramifications throughout the entire world. The entire world. So what do we do, Pastor? Do we hide? No, no, no. We just shine brighter. We just tell the world more at your offices uh, tomorrow there, as they talk about it. It's just an opportunity for me and you to share the word of God. Don't, don't hide your head tomorrow. Come on, church. Amen. Amen. So this eclipse is going to cross Nineveh, but now notice it's going to cross... It's going to cross and make a perfectly cross on a little town in Illinois called Little Egypt. Now, Egypt re, uh, is a representation of what? Slavery. And was it the children of Israel excited when they got out of slavery? 400 plus years of slavery. Weren't they excited? Not one feeble, not one was sick. They all went to the promised land. They all followed Moses, the power of God, the fire of God, the cloud by night. What does that mean? That means an escape. I believe that when this, this solar eclipse crosses this town, not because of the town, but the reference of that name, Little Egypt, means there are going to be many. Now listen, listen, listen. There are going to be many. They're going to be set free tomorrow. Set free tomorrow. Say it again. Set free tomorrow. Say it again. Set free tomorrow. Come on. When it crosses that little Egypt, I'm believing many are going to set free. Many are going to come to Jesus. Many are going to be delivered from this bondage. Many, you're going to see churches grow. You're going to see churches get on fire for God. Come on, church. My spiritual father said yesterday, preachers, get yourself on fire so that people could come watch you burn. He said it spiritually. Come on. I'm believing tomorrow there are going to be a lot of pulpits catching on fire. Hallelujah. Amen. These churches that were just kind of plain and simple, they're going to say, oh, come on. We're going to wake up. We're going to be filled with the Holy Ghost. Come on. We're going to get full of God. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Go with me to Jonah, the third chapter. And notice this. This is powerful. Can you say amen? Now, I have a new Bible. I, well, I say it's new. I, I'm using, I don't know if I, I've told you, but I'm using three new Bibles up here. Jonah's found on page 1277. For those that have it like mine. Amen. Isn't that wrong? Go to the, to the, the index. Now notice what it says in, in chapter 3. Now we're talking about Nineveh. Chapter 3. Uh, uh, verses 1, the word of the Lord came to Jonah a second time saying, get up, get, get up, go to Nineveh, the great city, and proclaim it to the message that I tell you. So Jonah got up and went to Nineveh according to the word of the Lord. Now Nineveh was an exceedingly large city, a three-day journey. Well, forgive me, I said five days. Well, no, three days journey across, across, uh, this is three days, excuse me, three days journey. Jonah began to enter the city going a day walk, and he cried in the 40th day's time. Nineveh will be overthrown, so the people of Nineveh believed God and proclaimed a fast, and everyone, great and small, put on sackcloth. Are you reading with me, church? Verse 6, And when the news reached the king of Nineveh, he arose from his throne, remo removed his robe, covered himself in sackcloth, and, and sat in ashes. Then he made a proclamation in Nineveh. This is the after effect that I'm talking about. Proclamation's coming. Things are going to happen. Revival's going to happen. Come on, church. Things are going to happen. Verses 5, look at Verses 5, and the people, and the people, so the people, and the people in Nineveh believe God. They call for a fast and put on sackcloth from the greatest of them to the least of them. This is, this is a great return to God, a great awakening. Come on, church. I'm believing. Believe with me tomorrow that this solar eclipse not only is just going to be a boo-hoo situation, it's going to be a marvel. Many people are going to come to Jesus. Many are going to awaken to God. Come on, church. I believe these seven cities of Nineveh, these preachers are getting busy there right now. Hallelujah. Amen. I believe little Egypt. Oh, if there's a spirit filled church in little Egypt, get ready, get ready, get ready. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. The United States of America has a window of opportunity to repent tomorrow. Asking forgiveness and mercy. 
Oh, do we need a change in this country. But just like Nineveh, America may avoid the verdict that these people have asked for. Or at least a lesser penalty for disobedience. And I'm going to tell you something. There's a lot of things that happen in this country, and it's happening now, that many are going to have to repent. Many of our leaders, leaders in high places are going to have to repent before God. Not to you and me, but before God. That's why I say, when you and I pray, you don't realize what you're doing in prayer. Prayer is making things happen in an unseen world, which you and I live and believe in the unseen. We don't have to see it change. We can believe it'll change because we know it's going to change. When, when I pray for Biden, I pray that his eyes are open. Because if he drops dead without Jesus, his life is gone for eternity. So what do we do instead of bashing him? We need to pray for him. Uh, pray for him more. Pray for those around him. Pray that God remove those advisors around him, those that are speaking in his ears, those that are directing him how to destroy this country. Pray, 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 instead of joining other people and talking about it. I remember when, o when Obama was president, boy, I didn't like it. I didn't like it. I didn't like it. Whenever that name would come up, I just, <sighs> to finally say, Lord, forgive me. I'm going to pray for him. I got up every morning to pray for him. And do you know something? My heart goes out to him to this day still. He, God loves him as much as he loves you. And President Biden or, or Biden, the same person, God loves him as much as he loves you. We just need to pray. Come on, church. And listen, last Sunday, we were supposed to have our corporate prayer, but we moved it without realizing tonight we're having it, and tomorrow is a solar eclipse. Hallelujah. Isn't that amazing? We're having corporate prayer. The Holy Ghost is going to get us praying. We're going to know how to pray tonight. Come on, church. We're going to know how to supply, how to bring our supply and pray. Pray, pray, pray for some great things. Hallelujah. Amen. I want your reward to be great in heaven. I want your rewards to be great in heaven. That Jesus will say, enter in, oh, you thou faithful servant, into the glorious work that you have done. Come on, enter in, hallelujah, amen. There are going to be a lot of Christians going to enter in with no rewards. But I want you to shine with the, with the crowns and just ready to hand them to Jesus when it's time to lay your crowns before him. Come on, or you're going to be watching me or somebody else handle these crowns. I want you to have so many crowns when you go to Jesus. Say, Jesus, I can, I'm ready to take these crowns off. They're getting heavy, but I'm ready, Jesus. I'm ready. <laughs> Amen. Oh, come on, Jesus. Hallelujah. Judgment is beginning. Hallelujah. We thought it already began, but it's beginning even more. After this eclipse, there's going to be some moves going on, some shakings going on, some, some movement into the, into the society. Come on, church. Judgment is beginning with America, and it will continue throughout all the nations of the world, all the nations. Why America? America is a model nation to the world, and it will always be a model nation. And listen to this. We have covenant with God for this nation. When George Washington stepped foot on this island, on, these, on this world, on this na nation, he made a covenant with God. Hallelujah. Can, can you say amen? He made a covenant with God, and that covenant still stands. Hallelujah. It's not going under. It's not going under. It's, it's going to move in a higher rate. Can you say amen? Higher. You know, and also, what's going on with Israel? I'm really just surprised and Pastor Christine said something so important, we're going to pray as the Speaker of the House. Um, I'm so surprised that he ignored Israel. He, he ignored the, uh, the border issue, that's another issue, but, but Israel is the one that stands the tallest for me. And he's a strong believer. I believe something happened to him that when he went to visit the White House, and the Democratic leadership that was there, at that moment, something changed him. I didn't, I didn't see it then, but I saw when, when they asked him, what about Israel and what about the border? He just kept on. That's not like him. We gotta pray. But that something happened. That means there is a strong 
opposing spirit that you don't realize how strong it is in Washington. There is a demon, I believe Satan, and the Bible tells that there are certain rulers that will rule nations, and I believe Satan is one that is ruling over Washington right now. Oh, we have little demon cohorts that are here just causing destruction here and there. But there are certain demons, there are, there are, there are certain leaders uh, in, that, in that hierarchy of demonic activity that are ruling. And I believe Satan is the one that's controlling this main thing in Washington. So what do we do as a church? We pray. But notice this. Tomorrow is the, is the great, great eclipse known to the North American eclipse, which the ramifications of that is going to cause a mighty move of God upon the people. So we need now to pray these people into join the supplies of the Spirit of God so that we can go forth and push back demonic activity in Washington like never before. Amen. Can you say amen? And notice this, I, ne I knew that this was happening, but when I saw our speaker change his whole countenance and his whole belief, and his trust, a God-believing man from Louisiana, when that change told me, serious business is going on right now. The balance of the United States in, uh, of America and the entire world is in your hands now, church. Now, now listen, listen, Christians, believers that are bought, bought by the blood of Jesus, you have a great responsibility now. Tomorrow begins. It, it, you should have been activated, those that don't know, but you should have been activated already. But now's the time to activate yourself because you hold great power. I want to say it again. A believer that is blood bought holds power, holds authority, and holds domination, domination over the wickedness of this land. You're empowered by Jesus Christ. Now notice this, notice this, I believe if you're just a little bitty praying Christian, I believe tonight we need to start being more a powerful praying Christian. And don't let others pray and say, well, that I'm not, called. you know, the attitude is, well, God didn't call me to pray. No, no, he called us all to pray, called us all to pray. We're all intercessors. Some people say, well, I'm an intercessor. No, we're all intercessors. Some people say, well, I'm just anointed to intercede. Uh, well, I'm glad you're anointed, but that's powerful. But all of us should be anointed to pray. Come on, church, can you say amen? All of us should be anointed to pray. All of us should pray. Hallelujah. Amen. And Satan knows that when the body of Christ gets together for prayer, he knows he's, do he's doomed. He's coming to an end. But he knows how to divide a church from prayer meeting. Come on, church. Hallelujah. Amen. Now, I, I will be frank with you. Uh, say, Pastor, be frank. <laughs> I'm not going to say it until you say it. Be frank. Why is it prayer meetings are always left on the back shelf that nobody wants to go to? Well, that's the most powerful time of the body of Christ to get together. Why is it prayer time is, is left like, ah, I'm not, I don't think I'm going to go. Why is that? You know why? I'll tell you the reason why. It's because that person really doesn't know the power that he has in prayer. Amen. Can you say amen? Say with me, amen. That's why, that's why when, when God calls you to pray, listen to the voice of the Spirit of God. Don't listen to your spirit or your flesh saying, don't pray, don't pray. That's the demon telling you don't pray. Don't go, don't go. That's the demon telling you. But you say, devil, you're a liar. I'm going to pray. I'm going to intercede. I'm going to combine my spiritual growth with others. And we're going to push back darkness, especially in these days that we're living. We're pushing back darkness. God told me in prayer, if you'll take care of my house, I'll take care of your house. It's very rare I pray for my house. But I know that as long as I'm praying for his house, my house is included. Come on, church. Hallelujah. As long as I take care of his house, my house is taken care of. Come in. Can you say amen? So we have to get out of this this dragness, this, 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 this cloud, this heaviness that prayer is not important. Prayer is only left to the pastor and those that have time to pray. I don't have time to pray. 
<laughs> I, believe, I believe the darker it gets, we're going to have to find out more time to pray. Say with me, amen, Pastor. Come on, say with me, amen, amen. Isn't that the truth? I'm speaking the truth, am I? Come on, am I speaking the truth, am I? I'm speaking the truth. Come on. Uh, you know, I believe all of us should come to pray, come to pray, come to pray, come to pray. Hallelujah. Amen. Look at Jeremiah, the 29th chapter. Pastor Christine asked a question this morning about God, how he answers, oh, how he makes, what was that word you used? How you make, how he makes divine things happen. And you know what I answered under the Spirit of God? I said, sweetheart, the devil, uh, excuse me, God will not do anything unless the church prays. Because he granted that authority to the church of Jesus Christ. He'll be breaking that law. And then if he broke that law, everything else will be broken. Laws. Sovereignty. Thank you. So in other words, that's what she was talking about, the sovereignty of God. And I said, he needs you and I to pray. We pray his will, he supports our will. Because it's based on his will. And when his will is not based on it, he's, you, you and I are open for the enemy's will to come in. That's where the confusion is at. So I believe that the church learns how to pray his will. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. I believe the church doesn't know that prayer. That's why they say, well, God is sovereign. He will do it as he wants to you know whatever happens god's in control you know that is for the person that doesn't know the word you can't say it's god's well god's will god permitted that. no 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 you permitted that what you permit god will sustain and god will support when you take authority over darkness, you're pushing back demonic activity so that God can move freely upon the people's lives. Come on, church. I'll tell you, I'll tell you an example. We were invited to a birthday, a wedding. It was an unbeliever's wedding, which, uh, you know, I don't really care to go to unbeliever's wedding because they're going to start drinking. And the Lord told me something one day. He said, I want you to go. And uh, you go to that party. I said, but they're going to be dancing. You get, a, you get a lot of Hispanics dancing in beer. It's an all-nighter. They're drunk. Come on, police everywhere. There's fights break out. That's why I don't like to go to these things. Awful, awful. I can ugh, end up fighting and police come. And, maybe that culture, but there's other cultures too that do the same thing. And so it's just sin. Can you say it's just sin? That's all it is. So I went... And the Lord had me sit by the bar. Now, the bar is curved. I sat in the corner. Of course, in my day, when I used to drink at the bar, I sat anywhere. But this time, I sat like a police officer at the bar looking at the people. And I said, Lord, I want to go sit with people I know to enjoy some good... Uh, uh, there's a tradition in Mexican weddings. It's called mole. Say mole. Oh. It's drenched chicken in brown gravy. Brown chili gray, right? I, I told my wife, I said, you know why the wedding has that stained food? To see how, how sloppy this, the bride will be. <laughs> you know, you know, get, <laughs> that's, yep, yep, that's the way you're going to be, sloppy. <laughs> well, I said bride, but also the groom. The groom. So when you eat there, you got to really put, like an Italian, put it all on there while you, <laughs> I mean, it's just sloppy, man. It's so good, though. And so I wanted to go sit over there with friends, but I'm at the bar. But I noticed somebody at the bar. I noticed something. The bar, the bar man was just sitting like this. I was just standing all mad. Nobody was buying from him. He was putting bottles of beer out there to people, making an advertisement. Nobody's coming. You know why nobody came? Because I was there. 
I got revelation. I said, oh, this is going to be good. No, we're going to be drinking tonight. I said, honey, don't you like sitting here in the bar? Bartender, can you give me a seven up with some lemon? Come on, bring it over here. Amen. Hallelujah. And he said, well, at least you're buying something. I said, no, no, I ain't buying the wedding buying it. <laughs> Amen. Nobody bought anything. That whole wedding, no one drank. And I wanted to go home, but I had to stay because I knew if I left, that's when the party started. So I stayed. Even the music was boring. Everything, nobody could have, a, I mean, they were having a natural good time, natural without alcohol. They didn't realize it. And the bartender closed out, didn't he? He closed down and left. He was hired to run that bar. He closed down and left. And I said, amen. amen. See, that's the purpose of a believer when you get revelation of that. Amen. Look at Jeremiah, the 29th chapter. <laughs> Verse 11, the Bible says this. Notice what he says here. Hallelujah. Are, are you with me, church? Hallelujah. He says, he says uh, praise God. Hallelujah. Amen. He says, for I know the plans that I have for you. And I'm going to put this. I know the plans that I have for the church. Says the Lord, plans of peace and not for evil. To give you a future and a hope. Then you shall call upon me and you shall come and pray to me and I will listen. You shall seek me and find me. And when you shall search for me with all your heart, I'll be found by you, says the Lord, and I will turn away your captivity and gather you from all the nations and from all the places where I have driven you, says the Lord. And then I'll, be, I'll bring you back, says the Lord, and I'll bring you back into the place from which where I caused you to be carried away. Captive. And notice this, this is the word of the Lord to us. I know the plans I have for you, church. It's a good plan. It's a good plan. It's a good future. We have a good future. You know that, church? We have a good future. Amen. We had some wonderful songs tonight, right? Anointed songs. Amen. Think of what, think what heaven's going to be like. Worshiping around God. Worshiping with Jesus. All these, oh, musicians everywhere. Everywhere. Oh, one great orchestra of musicians coming together. We're going to have that last, last wonderful communion with God, that holy communion. The last supper, the supper of the Lamb. You know what that means? The wedding of the Lamb. Have you ever been to a wonderful wedding where the bride gets up and welcomes everybody, raises the glass, and the bridegroom, thank you for being part of this wedding. I want you to think about Jesus standing up and you seated at that large table. I, I just can't. Oh, the table. Oh, the table. The wedding of the Lamb as he gets up and and says, you are married to me now. Woo! <laughs> Amen. This is why there's not going to be any shedding of tears at that moment. I told Pastor Christine, you know, there's going to be a time that you're going to shed some tears. Because you're going to find family that are not there, friends that are not there. But then he said he's going to turn it quickly. Because remember, you're going to remember a lot of things in your, when you're in heaven of things of the earth. You're going to remember a lot of things. But he's going to take away all the crying, all the hurt, because you're going to be in his presence. That's going to be a miracle of God to change your hearts from knowing family members or people that you know are not there in heaven rejoicing with you. Come on, church. And that's why he says that according to Revelation. Go with me to Luke 21. Come on, Luke 21. Hallelujah. Are you, are you okay, church? Hallelujah. So tomorrow, when you hear of this thing going on, say, hallelujah, Jesus. They're coming to Jesus. They're coming to Jesus. They're coming to Jesus. Get ready. They're coming to Jesus. The Spirit of the Lord is hovering over the darkness, and he's causing things to happen. Hallelujah. Amen. Come on, church. Hallelujah. Amen. Uh, Luke 21. Hallelujah. Amen. Notice what he says here in verse 25. He says, there will be signs. Are you there? Luke 21, 25. Are you there, church? There will be signs in the sun and the moons and the stars and on the earth distress of nations where perplexity of the seas and the waves roaring, men fainting from fear, expectations of what is coming on the inhabitants of the earth, for the power of heaven will be shaken. Then they will see the Son of Man coming in a cloud with power and great glory. When these things begin to happen, you got a job. Look up, lift up your heads. For your redemption is drawn nigh. Come on, church. Let's get ready. Come on. Let's get ready. Look up. 
uh, lift up your head for your redemption is drawn nigh. I like to say it this way. My redeemer is coming for me. Hallelujah. Lift up your eyes. Hallelujah. Come on, church. It's exciting. But to the world, let me say this. There's no time to play around. It's no time to act like a fool. It's no time. It's no time to just dig your head in the sand. It's time to awaken up and turn to God. Repent, for today is the day of salvation. Come on, church. Can you say amen? Uh, hallelujah. Can you say amen? Let's go ahead and stand up, church. Hallelujah. We're going to do something. We're going to take communion, but first of all, we're going to personally, we're going to confess something before the Lord. Can you say amen? Is that all right? I want you to confess something. You believe. You you agree with what I confess, so you'll say it with all your heart. Say it with me, dear Jesus. I humbly repent from all my shortcomings. I ask for forgiveness for anything and everything I have done that is not of your will, Lord. I ask for forgiveness for many of the generations of Christians that have missed the mark concerning what you have intended for the church. Lord, I speak. I ask you to forgive this generation. I now proclaim a recommitment. Say it with me, church to continually build upon a personal relationship with you, Lord, my Savior. I recommit continually to stay connected to you, Holy Ghost, that you reside in me. I recommit to follow your laws, to follow your commandments, to follow your ways, to follow your decrees. I'm obedient to your living word. I commit today to push back darkness in this day that we live in the name of Jesus, that many souls will come to know you through my prayers, Father, in the name of Jesus. Use me, Father, in this hour, in Jesus' name. And everybody said amen and amen.